In this video, I'm going to cover the step-by-step -step process detailing everything you need to know to get your ham radio license. As we go along in this video, you're going to notice that on each step. I'll put a number up in the corner of the screen as I talk about it. I'll do this as each point we'll cover will have some links where you can sign up and access other important information that I'm going to cover. Just focus on the video and follow along and reference the links once you see the entire process. I just went through the entire process myself, so I'll share everything I went through so you'll know what exactly to expect. Before we jump into the process, let's quickly answer these two questions. What is a ham radio and why should you get a ham radio license? Now, if you want to skip the section answering these questions, the actual steps pick up at this time shown here on the screen, and you can skip forward to the process. Amateur radio, more commonly referred to as ham radio, is a range of radio frequencies that individuals with a license can broadcast on to communicate. Let me explain it this way. If you use a radio, say for example the radio that I have here, you can dial in a station on the FM band, which will allow you to listen to a radio station that broadcasts on a specific frequency. The company that broadcasts on that frequency, they have a license to do so. With a radio like this, you can only listen to these frequencies, but you can't talk to other people with this radio. Now, with a ham radio like one of these devices shown here, you can both listen and talk to other people on a small set of designated frequencies. Based on your particular setup, you can communicate with others a few miles away, or you could hit a repeater tower, you can communicate far distances, and with even the right setup, you can even communicate around the world. But in order to be able to press the button on this device and transmit on these designated frequencies, you need a license, which leads me to my next point. Why get a ham radio license? In order to broadcast from your ham radio on a designated radio frequency, you need a license to do so. For the preparedness community, having the ability to communicate with others in your group after or during an emergency would be invaluable. Imagine if you're away from your family and there's a disaster and phones are overloaded. This actually happened on 9-11. Ham radios are the ultimate in guaranteeing that you can always communicate with others. If you have one of these devices and your team does as well, you can now communicate with each other. But like all things, it's important to practice with your gear in advance to know how to use it. And trust me, with a ham radio, that's even more important. And that's why getting a license is so crucial. Without a license, you can't practice legally with these devices. So let's jump into the steps to get your license. Step one, FRN registration. What is an FRN? An FRN or FCC registration number is a 10 digit set of numbers that identifies your business dealings with the FCC. You'll need to go to the FCC registration webpage to sign up. Now, the sign-up process is pretty simple. You'll simply register on their website by getting a free account. Then you'll log in and you'll fill out the information that they request. If you want a step-by-step -step guide that shows the exact sign-up process for the FCC, I'll post a link to that in the description section below. Once you register, you'll get a confirmation email like the one shown here on the screen. But of course, I have all of my information blurred out. Once you get the 10-digit FRN number, the FCC will email you after you sign up, and now you're ready to take your test. You'll need to print out the email with that information from the FCC and then take it with you when you go to take the test. Step two, find a test location. Next, let's discuss how to locate a test location in your area. Again, I'm gonna post links to everything below that I'm about to cover. To find the locations, you're gonna to go to the ARRL website where you'll have a couple of options. First, you can take the test online. There's a list of teams that do these tests online and you can look through the options and click on the links, which will lead you to a page where you can sort by remote test. Now, personally, I normally prefer to do things online, but for this, I wanted to go through the experience of taking it at a physical location. It's just a personal preference. I guess I wanted the whole experience, so I used a form on the ARRL website and I was able to enter my zip code and then find a location in my area where they were performing a test. Once you submit your zip code, it will return options along with relevant information, like the test date. You can also click on the location to get the individual's information who is administering the test if you wanna reach out to them in advance with any questions before you go. Step three, study for the test. Now, here's the key to all of this. 
In the past, it was at this point that I normally got sidetracked. I've used multiple study options before when I started and then stopped learning for the test. And I found plenty of free solutions online and some were okay, but I personally found a ham radio program that allowed me to set aside some time on a Friday and then dig into this nonstop for several hours. And that's exactly what I did. If you remember cramming for a test in high school or college, that's what I did before taking the test. I signed up for an account at hamradioprep.com to study this information. And yes, they are sponsoring this video. I went with them as a sponsor because it was this approach that really got me across the finish line. And I'll post a link along with a coupon if you do want to use them. When you log into their website, you're going to see the courses you enroll for. I signed up for the Level 1 Technician's License course and the Baofeng Basics, which I'll talk about more here in just a moment. Now, when studying for the Technician's License, you're going to have multiple videos that cover each section in detail. After watching the video, they're going to have the text laid out so you can read it to make sure that you grasp what you just learned in the video. And then finally, there's a quiz for each section that will go through all the material that you just learned. And the questions in the exam are actually questions on the real exam that you're going to take. Now, on the sidebar, you've got 10 sections that you'll study, each with its own video and text, and then test for that section. After completing all 10 sections, you can then take the final practice test with 35 questions, which will be comprised of the same questions that you're going to have on the day of the exam. And that's what I like about the test. At the end, after you finish, if you missed any questions, it will show you what section of the 10 sections I mentioned a moment ago that the question that you got wrong belongs to. So what you'll notice is if you're missing multiple questions on the same section, maybe there's a concept on a section that was a little difficult, you will notice this very quickly because it will show you miss these. So it really is a great tool to show you where to go back and study to reinforce any area that you may be weak on. What I personally did was I took the test about three or four times a day that I studied. And then again, the morning before I headed over to the test, I passed, I believe, five of the six tests that I took. So I was pretty confident when I was going to take the test. Step four, day of the test. I got up that morning, I went to get some coffee, and at the coffee shop, I took the test a couple of more times on my laptop just to make sure I was ready. I think between the caffeine and the confidence that I gained from taking the test multiple times, I felt pretty ready. What I did is I drove over to the location, and at the test site, it was at a person's house. They had tables set up in their garage with three retired vets that helped facilitate the test. And that's the great thing about this community. There's a lot of volunteers that help with events like this. What you'll need is a couple of pencils for the test and then a checkbook. The exam itself costs $15 to take it. Now, if you fail, you can retake it for another $15. Spoiler alert, I failed it by one question the first time I took it that morning. I honestly was a bit overly confident and I just rushed to the test really quick thinking, oh, I know all these. And so I missed just one. I was one short of passing. So what I had to do is I had to pay another $15 and the second time I took the test, I, I didn't leave. I stayed there. I took it. I slowed down. I took my time. And I really thought, thought through each question as I was taking them. So in the second test, I did fine. And I actually passed it with no problems. It was an awesome feeling to finally get that done. And it's important to note at this point, you cannot broadcast on your ham radio yet after you pass, which leads us to the next point. Step five, what happens after the test? Okay. So you finally passed your test. What happens next is that you're gonna get an email from the FCC to pay a fee to get your license. You're gonna to need to pay this fee within 10 days of taking your test. If you have any issues or you don't get a notification after the test, just reach out to the person who administered it. Mine took a little longer because they mailed in my test, so it delayed my getting the notification from the FCC. Now, once you pay the FCC fee of $35, this is where it gets exciting you'll get your license along with your call sign. You can print it out and they'll also send you one in the mail. Okay, so it's at this point that you can now legally broadcast on your radio, which leads us to our final point. Step six, what to do after you get your license. When I got my license, the first question of course was, okay, now what do I do? Obviously you're gonna need a ham radio. Most preppers start out with the Baofeng UV-5R. These will set you back about $22, which in my opinion is amazingly cheap. You're gonna to wanna to get a better antenna though. Here's the stock antenna that it came with. 
And then as you can see, here's the upgraded antenna that allows you to transmit and receive a lot better. There are two primary ways to communicate with these. There's simplex, meaning you'll be able to communicate with one person to another who also has a license and you get on the same frequency and you're able to talk to each other. You can communicate this way up to about a couple of miles with this approach. And secondly, you can program your radio to communicate with a repeater, which will boost your signal around the repeater. Now, programming your ham radio is really beyond the scope of this video, but if you take the ham radio prep course, they do have an additional course that you can pay for that will hold your hand and walk you through the whole process of programming your Baofeng radio. The first thing I personally did was to look up local repeaters in my area using the website repeaterbook.com. And you can find repeaters near your location, and it's a good idea to program those in advance into your radio so that if there's a disaster, you're already set up and ready to go. Many of these repeaters, they have their actual own backup power. So if the grid goes down, they can still broadcast. And there's also an app I downloaded on my phone, which has all the information you're going to need. Additionally, it will probably help to look up your local ham radio clubs by searching on Google for ham radio clubs near me as they're really a good resource of individuals that are often willing to help you learn. Also, and this is very important, participating in local nets before an emergency really helps you to find out if your radio is powerful enough for two-way communication with a repeater. Test your gear. This is why I recommend getting a license. You can legally broadcast during a disaster without a license, but if you have no experience, it's not gonna be easy if you don't have any experience with this device. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post those below. Again, I'll put all the links to everything that we covered in the description and comments section below. As always, stay safe out there.